Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. My name is Connor, and in today's video, we are going to do what we've been doing for the last couple videos, but in reverse order. So we're going to solve a problem on leak code. It's a pretty simple problem, and we're first going to solve it in APL, uh, which is my favorite programming language, and then we're going to solve it in Python and see how solving it in APL can influence the way that we write code in other languages. So the problem is longest common prefix. It says write a function that finds the longest common prefix string amongst an array of strings. If there is no common prefix, return an empty string. So for example, if we're given three words, flower, flow, and flight, the common prefix amongst these three words is FL. So that's what we return. And in the second example here, we're given dog, race, car, and car, and there's no common prefix here. So we just return an empty string. So let's hop over to our APL ride editor, solve this in APL first, and then we're going to solve it in Python. So here we are in our APL ride editor. I will leave links in the description to both Dialog APL and ride if you'd like to download these and play around with this. Or also you can head over to tryapl.org, which is basically just a web editor, which you don't have to do anything to get started with and start playing around with APL. But the first thing that we want to do here with our list of strings uh, words is we want to sort of reorient this nested array such that all of the uh, subarrays uh, have the same indices across the string. So we want the first index of each string to be in an array, the second index of each string to be in an array, and that'll make it easy for us to check if they're all the same and what's the common free prefix. So the first thing we need to do is make use of a function called mix, and that's going to basically put everything, each of the arrays on top of each other in sort of vertical form. Uh, then we can transpose, which is basically just going to do what the name of the function is. It's going to transpose this matrix of characters. And then we can do the opposite of uh, mix, which is split. And that's going to basically do the opposite of what mixing did. So mixing went from a nested array of flower, flow, and flight to a matrix of sort of characters. And then we transposed it. And then a mix or a split is going to basically go back into a nested array. So now we have each of the indices across the strings uh, in a array of our nested array, which is awesome because then we can do uh, basically uh, check if each of them are equal to each other, figure out how many of them are equal to each other, and then uh, take that many from one of the strings. So at this point, um, I will link in the description a talk that I gave, which actually focuses entirely on how to, like eight different ways on how to check whether all of the elements of a uh, an array or a string are equal. I won't spend a ton of time explaining it here. There are a number of different ways to do it. Um, the first one is to basically take the first element of each of your strings and then check whether it's equal to um, all of the elements in your string. So this is going to basically give you a bit mask of are each of the elements or characters in your string equal to the first character of that string. So you can see for the FFF and the LLL, we get three ones, which are all basically trues. But then for all of the other ones, we don't have um, all of the characters being equal to each other. And so then across this, we can do something called a logical and reduction, which is going to return true if all of them are one. And then this is going to basically give us a bit mask of which of the characters across our strings are equal to each other at each index. And in this example, we don't have um, any sort of gaps, but you could imagine you might get a result like this, uh, where the fourth character across all the strings are the same, but the third one is not. And in that case, we need to make sure that we are doing a basically uh, a zeroing out of any of the non-contiguous ones at the front. And the way that we do that is by doing a logical and uh, scan. Um, so this actually has no impact on our result at this time, but you could imagine that if we go words two, and we just type in, how do I do this? Like cattle, um, cart and castle. I believe that's going to work, right? So the fourth index is a T, but the third index is not the same across the words. Um, so if we do this and we change this to words too, you can see here we have this sort of floating one 
but that's not going to be a part of our common prefix. So by doing the logical and scan, it's going to zero out that floating one because basically a scan does uh, a reduction but keeps uh, incremental results. So here we're doing logical and, so it's basically checking are all of these equal to one. So it'll be one up until we see a zero and then it'll be a zero after that. So once we have this, we can keep our words to for the moment. All we need to do is to get a count of the number of characters at the beginning of each of our words that's common. So we just do a plus sum or a plus reduction, which is a sum. And then once we have this, we can basically do uh, a fork where we are going to take the first two letters of any one of our strings. So uh, the easiest way to do this is just to grab our first string and this is a fork that I've talked about in many videos. So we have two unary or monadic operations, AKA a function that just takes a single argument. Um, so this is what this one does. This is getting us how many characters at the beginning of our strings are common. This is gonna be uh, take the first of those strings and then this is gonna be take. So this is gonna be saying take the first n characters that are the same from our first string. And if we do this, we should get uh, CA for the common prefix. And if we change this to words, uh, we should get FL. So note that also we can do this over words and words too. And then we should get FL and CA, which is exactly what we want. So um, this is basically our solution here, longest common prefix. So pretty cool, in my opinion, this really shows the power of being able to sort of uh, be a shape thinker in APL, where we're changing the shape of our data so that we can do operations on it. Um, there are many other solutions. Um, this actually is not the most efficient way. If you end up watching the talk, I believe the most efficient way is to do um, a fork with an inner product as the binary operation in the middle which is and dot equal this. So this I think is the fastest way to do this, but if you're interested, I'm not gonna go through that right now. Um, I leave that as an exercise to the watcher to go and watch the full talk if you're interested. Um, but yeah, there are many different ways to sort of do this calculation. This is the most efficient. You can do it in four characters or three characters. But yeah, we're gonna just we're gonna stop there for this uh, APL solution. Now we're gonna hop over to uh, IPython and solve this in Python in a similar manner, trying to basically do something similar to what we've done here in APL and see where we end up. So let's hop over to IPython. So here we are in IPython and let's just get started. So the first thing we wanna do, similar to what we did in APL, is to basically transpose this. And the way we can do that, we don't really have a transpose or a well-named transpose function. Um, but zip star is the equivalent of transpose in Python. So if you do this, we now have, as you can see, a list of uh, tuples of each of the indices across our strings. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna check um, which one of these are all equal. And in the more iter tools library, so from more iter tools import all equal, we actually have this function. We do not have a module. All right. All right, we're back after we <laughs> installed IPython 3 and more iter tools using uh, pip3. And now that we have this, we can map over our transposed words with our all equal function. And we should get booleans, all equal comma, extra param. So we get true, true and false, false, which is exactly what we want. So we've got uh, the Fs, the Ls, uh, returning true. And at this point in the APL solution, we basically got a count. We summed up the trues, which are just ones in APL. But in Python, we don't want to do this. We can actually just make use of a function. We can basically combine the summing up of those uh, values. And then we can also combine the take, which was the 
binary operation in our fork at the end of the day using a function called take while, which is in the iter tools library. Take while. So if we replace our map with take while, I believe we should just end up with the tuples in our list that where all the letters are equal. And so now that we have this, all we need to do is map the first element out of each of these tuples and join them into a string. So uh, we can do this with just a simple list comprehension. So if we go x0 uh, for x in this, we should get uh, just the first of each of our tuples. And then all we have to do is go join of this and get rid of our list comprehension. I have my period in the wrong place. And that is our solution. So I think this is pretty elegant. Uh, using the zip star for our transpose, making use of all equal and take while, and then just using a simple uh, list comprehension with the join utility function for joining characters to create a string. I've seen a lot of these solutions on leak code, and none of them are one-liners or as succinct as this solution. So this just goes to show you that even if you're not gonna code in APL on a day-to-day -day basis, learning APL and learning to think the APL way can drastically improve the way that you write code in other languages, uh, which I think is, is really awesome. I also almost totally forgot that really what you should do if you have access to all of the modules in Python is to just use built-in functions when you have them. So uh, let's check that words is still available. In Python, in the OS module, there's just a function called common free prefix. So when you have access to uh, all the modules in Python, know your libraries, know your algorithms, know your functions, and just make use of these. Obviously, you can't use this in the leak code contest, but um, this is by far the best solution if you have access to it. Uh, so, like I said, links will be in the description if you want to check out Dialog APL or the Ride Editor, or if you just want to get started and try, try APL.org, that's my recommendation. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer all of them. And yeah, thanks for watching, and have a great day.